I don't like you. I loathe well, you. Well, then keep your mouth shut. You don't even own what you said to me. You didn't I make am comments. looking at you telling you I don't like you. I am owning it. I don't like you. I don't like you either. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you for saying what we're all thinking. No one likes Ed. He's a narcissistic snake of a man. He's the sort of guy that talks shit behind people's backs, but then absolutely bottles it when he gets confronted. Ed was supposed to watch my daughter Please that day. Please let her talk. You're such a pussy. You're such a pussy. Oh yeah, yeah, you're military? Correct. Brace yourselves, because finally, Ed's about to get called out for all his crap. He's about to get what's coming to him, and it's coming to him from multiple members of the cast. Before we get to that, let's rewind to the start. So, as day one wraps, the cast head home, and Ed reveals how it felt for him to meet Liz's new boyfriend. Meeting Jason, I didn't expect it, you know, like whatever. He's cute, he's attractive. I think Ed's really mad that he got pushed in a corner again. Now, Liz and Jason don't really seem all that concerned by Ed. I mean, there's the inevitable playing it up. They definitely want to make everyone think that they're the picture-perfect couple, and I'm sure Liz wouldn't mind making Ed just that little bit jealous, but they do genuinely seem happy together. It's no doubt that Liz has upgraded, but there is a slight sense that Jason might be just a tad insecure. It feels like there's a part of him that wants to fight Ed, or at the very least, let everyone know that he's willing to fight Ed. We're gonna roll up to the guest house, we're gonna have a good time. I'm sure Ed will be somewhere in the corner crying, but if he wants a problem, I'm right here. Ed and Liz is over. Now we move on with Liz and Jason. Yeah, Jason's going into the house determined to rub his happiness in Ed's face. They might not even be at the house yet, but you can already sense that this is going to be a clash of egos. Now, for his part, given that his pride has just been hurt, given that it was only yesterday that Ed was crying in front of everyone and saying he still loves Liz, Ed now totally changes his tune. The good news is she's not my problem anymore. I dodged probably the biggest bullet I could have had in my life. Funny you should say that, Ed, because that's exactly what everyone in Liz's life has been saying to her, too. Ed breaking up with her was the greatest gift he could have ever given Liz. And as she and Jason enter the living room later on in the night, grinning ear to ear, you can really tell that she's in a great place. I thought you handled Big Ed pretty well. You think so? He didn't really bark at me much. He was just... No. Yeah, I think he's just done. Did you just pick out a room? Yeah, she has a room already, so... Now, on that topic of picking out their room, Jason and Liz make a point of telling everyone they're gonna be having sex tonight. Making a baby in there later. It's gonna be loud, and that's the point, says Liz. She's clearly determined to make Ed jealous. But as for Ed, well, it's clear that he's been stewing away. He's been replaying everything that happened at the tell-all in the studio again and again in his mind. And that really becomes apparent later on, when all of the cast are sat round the dining table having dinner. Because it's at that point that Ed interrupts Liz mid-sentence and announces that he has something he wants to share. Oh, Lauren wanted to talk to him. Hey Liz, can I have a second, you guys? So, something happened earlier. Okay. Which I was pretty much called a liar. Okay. Now, the entire table were talking about Angela and Michael, and yet Ed just couldn't help himself. He had to change the topic to talk about his favourite subject, himself. So Ed then proceeds to call up his sister on the phone and asks her to give her version of the highly contested taco pasta incident. You were there, he says to his sister. Tell everyone what exactly happened that night. But surprise, surprise, no one actually cares. Like, Ed seems to think the world revolves around him. He seems to think everyone actually gives a shit about this pastor incident. We don't, Ed. We all know that that wasn't really the reason that you broke up. In fact, that whole subject is something everyone's already moved on from. Everyone except for you, apparently. We're talking about taco pasta. Do you not prepper for this already? <laughs> on what to say? It's been like, what, how many hours? Hey, I wish you luck. Make sure she stops drinking. No, you need to hey. shut the up. You need to watch your mouth. You don't talk 
Yeah. yeah, Jason has a good point. Does Ed really expect us to believe that he hasn't spoken to his sister ahead of this call? He hasn't asked her to corroborate his own story? I mean, the whole conversation is just stupid and pointless. Why did Ed really feel it was necessary to interrupt everyone to bring this up? But what's interesting is how quickly Jason jumps up and tries to escalate the situation. He's so done with Ed, he's so defensive of Liz, that he's just waiting for the opportunity to take Ed down in any way that he can. You need to watch your mouth. You don't talk You're not going to do anything. Okay. You're not going to do anything. You don't disrespect her like that. I mean, look, he's right, <laughs> realistically, Ed isn't going to do anything. But the thing is, when Jason goes in all guns blazing like this, when he goes on the attack, but Ed doesn't really give much back, it kind of looks bad on Jason. It makes his attempts at heroism fall flat on his face. There's a fine line between being a hero and being a bully. And thankfully, Jason quickly realises this, because he then awkwardly sits back down. And it's left to Ed to continue doing what Ed wants to do, which is to make everyone continue listening to his sister. Ed made a mistake, so I don't understand what all It was Ed was supposed to watch my daughter that please day. Please let her talk. You're such a pussy. You're such a pussy. Jason just can't help himself. He bites again. But it's all talk, no action. It's all a load of hot air from both of them. They're both trying to jostle for the place of alpha dog at the table, or more accurately, alpha dog in Liz's life. And after a bit of back and forth, Thais eventually breaks this up by at least feigning a bit of interest. She wants to know whether or not it's true that Liz has an anger problem. Is it true that Liz lost her sh and started screaming at everyone about the taco pasta, she asks. So Ed <laughs> brings the phone directly to Thais so that she can clearly hear his sister. She's, she died. I'm she was acting the way she's acting tonight. And that's but all. she's not acting any sort of way tonight. She's actually quite pleasant She's tonight. acting upset. She's acting Did upset. I curse? Whoops. Uh-oh. Ed's sister, who funnily enough is also called Liz, has just revealed the truth. And it's not quite as Ed wanted us all to believe. Liz isn't screaming right now, she isn't even shouting. So if what she just said on the phone is true, if this is how Liz was on the night of the incident, then everything Ed's been saying, his entire basis for ending his relationship, his attempts to paint Liz out as this monster with an anger problem, is just untrue. And now he's just been caught red-handed in a lie. She won't even let you talk. No, I she already admitted that. You're not going to do anything, dude. All right, Liz, I'm so sorry. No, it's just, she's, she's obnoxious. Now, when Ed realises that he's lost the room, he gets up and leaves the table, and he goes on to talk to his sister alone. She's clearly the only person who's willing to enable him here tonight, the only person who's willing to keep lying in order to make him feel better. But as the night progresses, as Ed cuts a lonely, pathetic figure drinking alone at the bar, it's Ashley who seems to muster up enough empathy to approach Ed and try to be nice towards him. I can't imagine being in your shoes. Oh, yeah. Like your ex, yeah. fiance, and then um, the partner's here, and yeah. the way you guys broke it off. I don't like how you left it, but I see why you did. Sorry, Ashley, but you've just fallen hook, line, and sinker for Ed's victim act. Just look at him. He's acting all sad and alone, all vulnerable, but he's only there because of his own actions. It was him that horrifically broke off the relationship, broke up with Liz weeks out from their wedding without even enough respect to inform her before telling the rest of the world. Yeah, don't feel sorry for the little man. He doesn't deserve our sympathy. And it's no wonder that no one else really wants to hang out with him now. And even Ashley makes him aware of this. She directly says to Ed that the way you broke up with Liz wasn't on. It wasn't acceptable. And just listen to Ed's response. I always that part up. Yeah, the way it ends. Yeah, she would have taken me for all my money. You think so? Oh, yeah. She has what she wanted. That right there is expert level deflection. 
rather than sincerely, genuinely taking accountability. Instead, he flips it and looks for a reason as to why his actions were justified. He again tries to make Liz look bad. She's a gold digger he now wants us all to believe. And I think that, that might finally be just a little bit of honesty from Ed. Perhaps that, that might be the real reason why he ended things. He didn't really believe that there was love. He didn't want there to be any chance, any chance whatsoever that he might lose money to Liz in a divorce. I think that's a far more likely, far more plausible theory than spicy taco pasta or anger issues. But as Ashley processes what Ed just said. Liz shows up asking for another drink. But at least I got something on record just to know that she wasn't telling the truth. Ready for my next drink. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get caught in a lie. So here we have Ed continuing this delusion that somehow he's proven that Liz was lying. When in actual fact, what we really found out was his sister exposed that he was lying. Somehow Ed's convinced that he's the one that's come out on top. It's as if his narcissism just won't let him see the truth. The truth being the fact that Liz has moved on. She's found herself an upgrade, a better boyfriend who she's clearly very happy with. And it's now left to Ashley to try and help Ed see and acknowledge the truth. And what lie oh, did you get caught in? Everything. Just, I don't want to talk about it. Okay. You're not my problem anymore. The truth hurts. Yeah, the truth hurts, which is why Ed is doing everything he can to avoid hearing the truth. He wants to try and run as far as he possibly can from the truth, and he seems determined to take Liz down with him. Like, what he just said isn't nice, and judging by Liz's face, she's been hurt by that. But the thing is, Liz is done with feeling this way. So she bites back by targeting Ed's insecurity. She hits him where she knows it's gonna hurt. I can mentally and physically look up to someone for the first time in my life. You have sloppy sex. Sloppy? You watch porn that is stepbrother, stepsister. Oh my gosh, Liz isn't holding back. She's not taking any prisoners today. She's done with this grubby, dirty little man, and she doesn't care who knows it. There's no more defending this guy. She's ready to expose his deep, dark secrets, his dirtiest little secrets, to the rest of the world. And if any doubts remain that maybe she might still harbour some feelings for him, I think this is the clearest sign that we've had yet that she's really over him. She's happy to humiliate him. Ed's just left there in shock. He's left looking like a complete idiot. And it's hilarious that the best comeback he can come up with is you have sloppy sex. I mean, what does that even mean, Ed? He's just sour and it's really starting to show. You guys, go be happy, go. Congratulations. You won the lottery, man. I, I sure did. I sure did. Go away, go away. Ed is like a disgruntled troll. He's flapping his arms and telling people to go away. Now, when everyone does eventually go away, he finds company, he seeks solace with the one person in the house who's even more hideous than he is. Yeah, Angela. Why couldn't you go find someone that appreciates who you are? Because I don't want no Because I think you deserve, I, I think Michael's a scammy. We're talking right now, please. Michael's a scamming what, Ed? What exactly was it that you were about to say? Finish your sentence. Go on, I dare you. Just look at that fear in his eyes when he realises that Michael is behind him. If ever you need proof that this man is a coward, then this is it. Yeah. Where's that fake bravado now, Ed? Now, when he loses his ally, when Angela goes off to cause a scene in another room like she always does, Ed then makes his way over to the boys. And get this, he tries to connect with them by sharing his opinions about foreign women. Yeah. Foreign women, they understand and appreciate yeah, America they're the, they're more the than, best. Trust than, me. than girls in a bar d in I, America. I learned that, luckily, I learned that young versus you guys. I'm not going to lie. This coming from Ed isn't really a surprise, but I'm disappointed in Patrick. What he's saying here is he prefers foreign women over American women because he claims they're more wowed by the lifestyle that he can provide them in America. 
Yeah, and let's face it, that is precisely what Ed was trying to do with Rose in the Philippines, wasn't it? It's just funny. It's funny how here he is talking about taking advantage of economically deprived women, women from foreign countries who are happy to be with this short, ugly man because of his relative financial might, while at the same time earlier, he was complaining that Liz was only with him for money. Like, which is it, Ed? You can't have it both ways. I mean, let's be honest, your money is pretty much the only thing that you have going for you. It's not exactly like you're going to attract any women with your looks, your personality or your bedroom prowess. Because if Liz's description of what Ed is like in the bedroom is anything to go by, she's painting a very boring, bleak picture. I want to know. I'm curious. Like, because anatomically, I don't understand. You on top? Yeah, obviously. <laughs> so it was the only position. And I don't know how he got tired with that. Liz on top was the only position they ever did. And even then, it used to wear the man out. Yeah, just think about that for a second, or rather don't think about it, but just think about the audacity of the man. This is the guy who earlier claimed that Liz and Jason had sloppy sex. Yeah, what's that famous saying? Karma's a bitch? It really is, because now Ed has to stand and watch as Jason sweeps Liz off her feet, something he could never do, and takes her directly to the bedroom. You've got to imagine, that is a blow to Ed's ego. You ready to go to bed? <laughs> uh, we're not going to bed. <laughs> you ready to go to the room? Let's just say it how it is. These two are definitely being a bit extra. They're going over the top to rub their relationship in Ed's face. But you know what? Good for them. They're not going to have this opportunity for long. So they may as well take advantage of the situation. They may as well do their best to make Ed feel as bad as possible. And it's clearly working. Because just listen to what Ed comes up with next. They want to make a scene. They want to try to make a point. Look, she, not to be mean, but she's like old. To, like she's like. You said she's old. She's old to who? Yeah, he's really clasping at straws here, isn't he? Because what exactly is Ed trying to say? Is that really how he's going to try and console himself? Because sorry, Liz is not old. Who does he think he is? Leonardo DiCaprio. Now, when all the girls question him. Patrick tries to defend Ed, or at least he tries to act as his translator. What he means to say, says Patrick, is Jason is just getting Ed's sloppy seconds. His exact words, sloppy seconds. So Ed doesn't care, he says. But what a gross thing to say. And it's no surprise that all the girls have an issue with it. In fact, it's left to Jasmine, who we all know doesn't like Ed, doesn't like him at all, who takes this opportunity to put Ed in his place. She said that she always has to be on top and you will get it tied. <laughs> Wait a minute, what? <laughs> That was something that Jasmine really enjoyed, I think. She got a lot of pleasure from knocking Ed down a peg or two. But when we join them the next day at the studio, there's someone else who also wants to confront Ed. You see, it turns out that Ed and Lauren have been having a lot of back and forth online and via the media. Lauren reveals that she was asked by a journalist who she dislikes the most from the 90 Day Fiancé universe. And her answer? Ed, I loathe him because he treats women like And then he did an interview and said that I'm a bottom feeder. Yeah, it's fair. I mean, everything that Lauren says is accurate, isn't it? So as Lauren and Ed are sat back to back getting their makeup done, the tension in the room is palpable. You can really tell that neither likes the other. But it's left to Lauren to address the elephant in the room. You see, unlike Ed, who loves to talk behind everyone's back, Lauren is all too happy to have it out face to face. So she comes right out with it. She says to Ed, Now that we're in person, do I look like a bottom feeder? Looking forward to your perfect life. Lauren. Well, I don't have a perfect life. Well, then just keep your mouth shut about me online. How about uh, that? 
You can immediately see from Lauren's reaction that she doesn't like being spoken to by Ed like that. You can keep your mouth shut. Is that really what he just said? All I did, she says to Ed, was honestly answer a question that I was asked. I don't like you and I have my reasons why. But as for you, says Lauren, you started with the personal insults. You have no reason, no justification for calling me a bottom feeder. That was just vindictive. But the final straw for Lauren, what really tips her over the edge, isn't when Ed tells her to keep her mouth shut again for a second time, but it's when he hypocritically says to her, you don't own what you say. You I am comments. looking at you telling you I don't like you. I am owning it, I don't like you. I don't like you either. He's telling me I'm not owning stuff. You don't know who I am. Now, the funny thing is, while the rest of the cast are all watching on and Alexi jumps in to try and calm things down, there's someone else in that room who equally dislikes Ed and is happy, more than happy, to throw him under the bus. You see, it's at this point that Jasmine reveals and we get to see a flashback scene of what Ed was saying about Lauren behind her back to the rest of the cast. You see, that morning, in the van on the way to the studio, Ed was telling everyone that despite this picture-perfect marriage that they want everyone to believe that they have, he thinks Lauren and Alexi are fake. And not just that, there's more that Jasmine is all too happy to share. And he also said that you must make your husband's life very miserable. Oh, uh, what? <laughs> what? I just wanted to let you know what's going on. Now, to say that Lauren is livid would be a massive understatement, but this argument stops here for now. Ed finishes having his makeup done and walks away. But uh, shortly after, when they're all on stage, Sean asks what happened. And as Lauren provides context to the story, she again explains all the stuff that happened online. Ed interrupts her to say this. Lauren, as God is my witness, and you guys too, if I don't like somebody, I'm going to tell you to your face. I don't have I'm access not gonna to go tell you around to your, your face, back, and I'm not going to go on social media and say it. Online. Really? Ed? Really? Who's he trying to fool? Like, I've literally lost count of how many times he's been talking behind people's backs in this episode alone. It's hilarious that he's now trying to present himself as the most honest of everyone. Someone who's happy to say it to your face. Yeah, what a hypocrite. And when Lauren says, you're not nice to people, Ed has the audacity to say to her, tell me to my face, which Lauren gladly <laughs> obliges with. Hey, Ed, I think you are a bully. I think you are not nice okay. to people. I think you're not nice to and women. I think you're and chauvinist. that's it. And I think you're a chauvinist. I think you're a chauvinist. Take note, Ed, because that is how you talk to people. You talk about them to their face. Well done, Lauren. Well done. And despite Ed's ramblings that Lauren's a chauvinist, she hates men. At this point, Ed has totally lost all credibility. He's really showed his true colours today. He showed himself to be a liar, a sh talker and a vindictive, nasty, sad, alone little man.